to the 10th floor with me, Matt. Hi, everybody. That's Kat. I'm Kat. Happy Easter. <laughs> Happy Easter, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, come on out of that waiting room, climb on into the elevator. We're uh, actually going to get out of the elevator immediately. We're leaving. We're going to go to Bobby's. There's a special event, a special Easter event happening. they got decoration, little pink bunnies all along the walls. Special Easter egg hunt <laughs> in, in the front near the benches and tables uh, for all the youngins. Little blonde mm -hmm. Wiley running around with mm -hmm. little James trying to find them eggs. Avery's getting a little too old like for that. They should have done a little, like, you know, I don't know, an Easter egg hunt over there in Oscar's Meadow or something. You know, something like that. They should have uh, done that. Um, Avery and, um, Avery and Donna, uh, Avery is feeling a little too old and too cool for this now. Donna, though, still in the pocket, still excited to run around, okay? Uh, Jake, Aiden, and Danny, and, uh, and Dante's kid are all hanging out in the back with their arms crossed, looking angry at each other. You know what's funny? That you said that to, to, that Avery may be a little too cool for that. Yeah. So on Sat on Saturday, yeah, yesterday, your sister took your knee all your nieces and your nephew to uh -huh. a Easter egg hunt, yeah. community Easter egg hunt. Well, Stephen, who's ten years old, was far too cool to go look for an egg. But then after the hunt was over, and his sister and his cousin had baskets full of eggs and candy. He wanted to know if he could have some. <laughs> and your sister, his auntie told him, you should have hunted, huh? Yeah. Sorry. No, yeah. thanks. Yeah, my sister's really good at that. My sister's good <laughs> at, that, at that, that, like, she 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 knows how to, like, give consequences without torturing the child. Yeah. <laughs> she, like, she, she knows, like, she, she has a clear idea on how to do that. <laughs> Uh, and it's it's a sight to behold, you know. There, I, I wasn't there to to witness that, but I'm sure there was no dripping sarcasm or meanness in her tone. It was a simple state of fact. If you wanted that chocolate, you should have hunted for eggs. Yeah, and they had it split up too. It's not like he was going to have to hunt with a two year old. Um, they had it set. They had it sectioned out, so there was an older group to hunt in a designated area. He could have went and did that, but he was too cool for. He could have found ten bucks, but no. Exactly. But no, no. He could have gotten two <laughs> booster packs of Pokemon cards, but no. But no. Instead, he was too cool. Happy Easter, everybody. Melissa's talking. Sandra's talking. That's it so far. I don't imagine we're going to have Chandra today. I imagine she is knee deep in Easter. Easter. I don't know who else is out there. I, I, I hope. I hope that anybody that isn't with us this morning is having so much fun that the tenth floor is not on your mind. Jeannie's here too. I figure Kelly's going to show up in any moment. And who else wants to show up here on the 10th floor? You're welcome to. Uh, Melissa says that Valentine is the Agatha Harkness of Port Charles. And Ma, that's not a reference you're going to understand. But I'm glad that Melissa understood the reference I made on today's cover art. What was it now? So uh, Agatha Harkness is a character in those Marvel superhero stuff. Okay. She was in the Wanda... Not familiar. She was in the WandaVision TV show that's on Disney Plus, which I'm sure <laughs> you've seen the graphic of Disney. Um, just, you know, a little superhero, you know, 10 episode, 8 episode, um, <laughs> just many, many show about <laughs> a couple of these characters that were in the movies. <laughs> uh, and in this was a secondary character named Agatha Harkness, who was the secret villain during the entire thing. Now, the... The way that they presented the show was about Elizabeth Olsen, who's Mary Kate and Ashley's little sister. Yes, she's an actress, and she she plays the Scarlet Witch. Oh, uh, okay, and she's got all of these reality warping powers. <laughs> and in the <this> show, <laughs> she changed this small town to resemble different eras of television. So the first episode was like I Love Lucy. Okay. And the second episode was like something from the seventies, like a like happy days, like a happy days type of thing, right? <laughs> uh, and then the next one was like was was eighty century. It was like 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 uh, like who's the boss? Okay. Right. The next one was like Full House, and then the next one was like Malcolm in the Middle, and then and the next one was like um, Modern Family. So okay. we just presented the show through the decades as if it was these different eras of television, and Agatha Harkness was the villain behind the scenes this whole time. And we find out in like the second to the last episode that it was Agatha all along. Well, that's a very good reference, man. 
So with Agatha all along, they, there was a theme song that was that was uh, that that they gave to this character, and they gave her a little mini TV opening, showing her all of the little dastardly things that she was doing behind the scenes throughout this entire series so far, and it was set up like the monsters, and <laughs> just in style. It was black mm -hmm. and white, and it was kind of creepy because mm -hmm. she played this witch. Mm -hmm. um, and the name mm -hmm. of that song is It Was Agatha All Along. And that was the whole huh. point of It Was Agatha All Along. All along. Yeah. yeah. And that was the whole thing. And so I stole that. I stole the Munsters um, <laughs> art, you know, the Munsters uh, uh -huh. uh, text. Yeah. And so the, today's cover art is It Was Valentine All Along. And that was my very long explanation as to why that's super funny and everybody should love it. It is. It is pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, that balance, man. Oh man. Um, <clears throat> I I'm not surprised that it's Valentine, but at the same time, no. Oh boy, that's some good TV right there. It is so it, good TV. Like I'm surprised and not surprised. But he really guys, did launch it. This is he, what I. This this was hard for me. Okay. I, I had to watch those scenes over again. Mm-hmm. Isn't the scenes of Valentine and Brennan in the car? Jack Brennan. Jack Brennan had to rewatch that stuff <laughs> because <clears throat> I don't know about you guys, but Jack Brennan doesn't enunciate that well. He doesn't move his mouth that much, so it's hard to read his lips while he's talking. It's you hard really got to listen. His lips. You really got to listen. Andy has an accent, and they had the great between the characters. Mm -hmm. So it was really hard, and their voices weren't all that, um, you know, they weren't they're trying to be clandestine, much. you know, have the secret conversation. Exactly. They even so, picked a deaf cop who couldn't even hear him. Yes. That was pretty smart. Yeah. That was, that was cool, actually. <laughs> um, but, and they still paid him off, even though he couldn't hear a doggone thing. Right. Just fine. Because <laughs> it was still illegal. Yes. Um, um, but... That's what I didn't like about it. It was just, it was a little mm -hmm. hard to understand all. And there was a lot of dialogue. Oh, yeah. Well, they had to, they had to really set exactly what their intention is going forward with this story that they're inheriting. And so they oh, really had to, gosh. like, they had to establish a couple mm -hmm. of things really hard in this conversation. Number one, he's not John Burnett anymore. He is Jack Brennan. Because mm -hmm. we have John Cates and we have Jack Brennan and we ain't having two Johns at the same time. Oh. <laughs> that could get complicated. Uh, we had to establish that Valentine was far more connected into Pikeman this entire time than he originally had let on with Sonny. When he sat down across from Sonny that one time, maybe twice in total. First, I think it was, hey, here's this opportunity with Pikeman. You should take it. It's really lucrative. The second mm -hmm. one was, I know Pikeman has made you a little concerned and confused, but hey, you know, the money's good and you're going to be fine. I think those were the two interactions that Valentina's has had in total throughout this entire thing. But we find out there's a little more you know, involved. Oh, big time. Valentine. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. Valentine, your daddy would be so proud of you. <laughs> so here's the thing, and, and, and this is one of those things that only the future is going to be able to inform us. What is going to happen next will answer this question that I have. Because that conversation they had, now maybe you have the answer because you watched it more than once. I wasn't able to leave that conversation between Valentine and Jack with a full understanding of, of whether or not Valentine has been at the top of Pikeman this whole time or at the top of Pikeman since Jack was arrested. Because I feel like there was... Both of them kind of seemed true at the same time. I think both of them are true at the same time, too. Now, no, they didn't explain that. They did no, not explain Not clearly. That. I know... Not like, clearly. Valentine referenced something about being in charge since Jack was in prison, but that could also be um, interpreted as, these are the things that I have been doing that you don't know about because you have been in prison. I have been running these operations rather than you because you were unavailable. Mm -hmm. Not, I stepped up to fill the void of you in a mm -hmm. role that I hadn't been in before. Mm -hmm. so I'm not 100% clear yet mm -hmm. as to how involved Valentine has been this whole time. Did he burn down Anna's house, you know? That's, I don't think so. 
<laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Because I do think it back then, I think his his feelings for for, for Anna seemed to be real. Mm -hmm. Um but boy, they sure have made a heel turn on him, haven't they? He's still dastardly, folks. Um that's what Jack said. Uh yeah. <laughs> see, I don't, I don't know. I don't see. I, I don't know because it all also depends on motivation. Um, Valentine is not beyond doing bad things to get what he wants. Um, like for example, the result of Anna's house burning down is she moved in with him. Yeah, and that could have been just something that he wanted to happen. Mm -hmm. Let me inspire this in some way. Burning down Anna's house so she would have to move in with him isn't far away from Valentine's mind being like, "Well, this is a basic logical thing I can do." You know, you know what I'm trying to say. Well, yeah, it's opportunity for manipulation. She was running. She wasn't even at home. He would have known that. All that kind of stuff. Like it was, it was a manipulation. Yeah, he manipulated the situation to make <clears throat> it more likely for him to have the result that he was after. Uh, so I, I totally see it as as reasonable that he could have possibly done that, ordered that, or been involved in that. Mm -hmm. But man, he doesn't see any resolution uh, of the whole sunny thing. It's just the killing him is the best thing to do. So, well, he, but that does tell me, though, that does tell me, though, even though he might not be behind that sparking up Anna's house, mm -hmm. but he was behind that Metro Court shooting. Or at least knew that it was going on and facilitated it in some way, knowing mm -hmm. that Sonny was the target. I mean, they right. did take a couple of attempts at Sonny, so I can understand that at this point, him sitting in that van going, you know what, this is challenging. This is this is harder to pull off than we thought it was going to be, so instead of just killing him, let's have him ruin himself. Oh. Now, Sonny has been a little on the edge over the last couple Sonny of years. Sonny has been a little on the edge. Now, the, the, the impression I got from the conversation was mm -hmm. he hasn't started giving him the placebo yet. That is the impression that I got as well. I reached out to his. Soon he yeah. will be. His next refill is going to. Right. Um, now, Sonny's do totally been on the edge, which means that the reliance on his medicine is higher than ever. It's really keeping him because right now he's being pushed, right? Like he beat the tar out of Cyrus and, and tried to put an air bubble in his thing and, and, and doesn't believe a word coming out of Jason and Carly's mouth. Like he's really at the edge of his ability to control himself while being medicated. Yes. Which means that without, theory. yeah, without the benefit of that medication, he is going to completely fly off the handle. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, and he it's, is. it's, a, it's, I always try to put myself in Maurice Bernard's shoes during this story, these types of stories, mm -hmm. because he is, has been, especially recently, so open and honest about his battles with bipolar and how Sonny is bipolar due to the influence that Maurice has had on the character, which means that trait of Sonny's has to feel very personal to him. Now, I wonder how Maurice feels about uh, another go around of um, of Sonny falling off the rails. You know, but also at the same time, I feel like this is kind of being done in a different way <laughs> because it's showing, because it's an opportunity for Maurice Bernard to show and educate the audience in how the medicine really can keep you under control during the most tense situations of your life. <laughs> By showing the the results of, of somebody tampering with it or not having access to it, or, you know, if you want to put yourself in this situation where you decide you're not taking it anymore, you can see through this dramatized reaction what the result of those things might be. And so it's an interesting opportunity to kind of show the other side of it, not, not, well, this is how it really helps me every day, but to show how it doesn't help you when you're off. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if Ava figures this out, the placebos part, mm -hmm. if Ava figures it out, will she do the right thing or she will just take it as more opportunity to get uh, Mr. Corinthos, as she's always wanted him to be her man, kind of. That's what she seems to want. Will she come? Will she? Will she recognize something and 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 take the high road and do the right thing, or will she? You know, and this is right in Ava's wheelhouse because she did the same thing to Morgan, even though she's not facilitating it this time. She did the same thing to Morgan. <laughs> I, uh, I I don't know. It's it's I, uh, oh goodness. Um, it really depends on who or what what are Ava's uh, motivations in this. 
is she being more nefarious and secretive during this whole time that she has been letting on? Has she and Valentine been in some sort of cahoots? I wouldn't be surprised. Do they have the same idea and don't realize it? Has Ava already been tampering with Sunny's medication and Valentine doesn't realize it? Wouldn't that be something? Any that number of things happen. are possible under That's the new possible. writing team. Uh, cause, That's cause like, like, like we said before the change happened, three years of solid, good ideas and we're seeing it already. Mm -hmm. So anything is really possible. Really. Anything is. I can see, I can see Ava and Valentine kind of coming to the same conclusion. Well, if Sonny was a little more off his rocker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is already something that Ava's done in the past. Exactly. And it worked. It did. If he hadn't got blown up, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> but that that was Julian, wasn't her? Or whoever it is. Olivia, whoever planted the bomb, I can't recall. Right. I, I think it was but Olivia. That wasn't, of course she didn't she she wasn't behind the bombing of the of the vehicle no. and have the organ blown up. The only but thing she wanted, but she wanted him to be off his meds yeah. and be crazy. The and, only thing know, that she volatile. wanted was for him to be um uh unpredictable. Mm -hmm. She she didn't like you say, Hey Morgan, why don't you hop in that car real quick? You know, like, I do think that she gets a little too much smoke for the death of Morgan. I know. She was involved, but it wasn't her fault. She didn't make it happen. She wasn't involved in the planning. No. It was an accident. No, it was completely different. That it, that, that it in the result, is not what she was hoping for. No, now, no. You want to hold Ava, you want to hold Ava responsible for something? For real? But Kate Howard. There you she's go. Really responsible for she that. she held a gun to that person and pulled the trigger. Yeah, close you know. range blew her away. Gosh, she almost she almost stopped Ryan. Yeah, she, she, oof, right in his back. That long kitchen butcher knife, really. <laughs> Man, oh gosh, what a what a moment, <laughs> what a moment. Where's Brenda's cottage? Somewhere far away from New York. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Melissa is certain. <laughs> That Ava's working with Valentine. I wouldn't be surprised. So. I wouldn't be surprised. That'd be juicy too. I like. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but man, Ava's real good at being bad. But I kind of did want to see them as like. I kind of wanted to see Ava and Sonny like some dynamic duo of crime lords. I really did want to see that. Maybe we'll still get it. Maybe she's not messing with them and has genuine feelings. I don't know. You know, maybe maybe something's in, in, ignited between the two of them in the solitude think, of his penthouse. I really think that she wants Sonny to fall for her just for the idea that he's fallen for her because he never fell for her before. They had some angry tomb, tomb sex. To that, have that's it. that is it. That is it, really. <laughs> and that was it. You know, there was no um, rape romance. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know because uh, we haven't explored what she's thinking. We, we, we've, we've seen her reaction to, we've seen her influence, uh, we've seen her try to guide Joss away from Dex, so uh, if she didn't, like, accidentally walk in with Sonny shooting him in the head, you know? Right. <laughs> Which oh. didn't happen, but, you know, Ava was like, you stay away from that situation, you dumb blonde. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so, you know, she's she's involved, she's influenced uh, things, she, she knows what's going on, and she, of all of the characters out there, probably except for Carly, would understand how Sonny's mind works and the pressure he's under and, and what he has to do in order to survive better than anybody, way better than Nina, that's for sure. Oh, Nina. Wait, Nina's going to be mad as hell when she figures out that Ava... <laughs> when she figures out that Ava's... Because she kind of she kind of suspects it a tiny bit. Um, but um, she's going to be mad as all get out when she figures out that Ava's trying to bed her of man. And Ava's trying... Yeah, Ava's telling her that she's gonna have to plan with her to get him back. Yeah, she got a plan. She she got a plan already, but uh, uh, there's no benefit for you, Miss Nina, in it. Uh, uh, none, none whatsoever. I really don't know what the future is for Nina right now, especially now with with with, with these revelations about Valentine. He's in he's into things a lot bigger than I thought he was going to be involved in, and so my my my, my dreams of a of a of a Valentine and Nina. 
uh, uh, pairing again, I don't know, fe feel a little more far-fetched because I'm not sure how Nina would be, uh, how interested Nina would be in jumping in with somebody who also is running a major dangerous organization. It depends on how much Nina wants some revenge on Sonny and Ava. Ooh, see, that's the thing too, okay? Because, you know, if, if, if things continue to go out of control, if she loses Ava as the best friend because, you know, she, she walks in on them in flagrante delecto as they say then uh that could ignite another layer and who knows maybe we get valentine drew and nina all working together to try to make poor charles what they want it to be yeah you know what valentine oh he's he's reaching deep for his for his uh casadine he is he man, is, oh man. He is. James Lott Jr. is with us in the chat. Hello, James. Happy Easter, James. He says, Happy Easter, Happy Resurrection Day from James. Those specific words. He says, The Valentine revelation was so good and unexpected. And here's a question from Blinkma hmm. Why did Ava make it so that she told Sonny? that Dante was okay, rather than just allowing him to see the text or saying, hey, you got a text. Why did she make it so she was like, oh, I called the hospital and found this out for you. Rather because than just it, seeing the text. Well, because it, it, it would, it, it's convincing uh, it, Sonny that, she, that somehow she needs him. You know, he needs her. And that um, she's in his corner. She's looking out for him. And exactly. she made a call. And, and, then she, and then she offered to call back. She didn't ask those questions. And it, she oh. wanted the good news and update to be associated with her voice and face. Absolutely. She wanted that 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 lift in his spirits and this surge of of happy brain chemicals. Yes, to be she associated wants to be, with Ava. There's that dopamine. Exactly. <laughs> she's trying to. She's brainwashing him through dopamine. Mm -hmm. And she kind of has been doing that over the last couple of weeks, just in the conversations and, he, and support. And he scooched her too. I know he's falling for it. Yes, he is. He's All of our heroes are falling, everybody. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and let's talk about the showdown between he, Harley, Jason, and Ava. In Mama, the, I, I in really the, have to compliment. There. Before we get into the details of that, I have to compliment how they just even set these situations up now. For Jason to walk in on Sunny, kind of berating Carly over it is so brilliant to me just in 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 just the setup alone of him walking in being undisturbed really by the words that are coming out of of, of Sonny's mouth in any major way and then just standing next to her like like there's not even going to be a question as to whose side I'm on in this argument Mr. Sure. Sonny yeah it's a line in the sand you know fast <laughs> So, like, just in the physicality, you know, the stage direction. And that doesn't come from the script. That comes from the directors being more inspired by the script. You know, and I just, I love to see it. I love to see the positive rippling through all of the different departments on General Hospital. Hey, and you, having Carly standing in between them. Oh, yes, the, says James. The difference in, difference in intensity between Steve Burton playing Harris, mm -hmm. Steve Burton playing Jason, the intensity of it is, even though there's not more words or anything, and there's really currently not more action, but the intensity of it yeah. is just different. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it? There, There is um, an extra layer of, 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 of believability, I guess, uh, when he's Jason Morgan. Um, I, see, I see a little less of Steve Burton acting and a little more of, of Jason Morgan existing. And that has to do with passion and experience, you know? Yeah. Um, I love to see it. I, 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 I've really enjoyed his comeback, and I've enjoyed every really bit and scene that, that they've included Jason in. Um, the, the showdown between them uh, there at the end of this week, where, you know, he's basically just yelling at both of them, you, you both betrayed me, you know? like I know, and I was really shocked. I was really shocked when they had this come out of Sonny's mouth, when they was referring to Michael, your son. He's never done that before. Sonny is is really feeling it. He um and and I reiterate this on Twitter, and I think I re reiterate this on the podcast a little bit too. Um, this isn't just you know, well, the last two years, Jason. It's been like the last since your patient six, you know, 
it's mm-hmm. ever since you died the first time yeah. or most recent to last time because mm-hmm. uh, it wasn't the first but uh <laughs> the time you were shot by phase on and dumped off of the docks came back as patient six things have not been exactly as smooth as they had been before when it came to the trio of sunny carly and jason and when the rocks fell on J- jason's head at that time sunny already had bad taste in his mouth a little bit for jason yeah because of the carly situation yeah, yeah, and so the rocks fall on his head. He doesn't call, he doesn't write, he doesn't even send a postcard or a stamp with his initials on it. Nothing. Nothing. And so I kind of see it, uh, when, it when it comes down to it, I think Sonny is reacting the way Sonny would. I, I don't find this to be shocking, you know, beyond like, oh, how fun. Uh, but I don't find it to be uh, out of character. I don't find it to be a shocking development. I think that this makes perfect sense. It, it does, and Jake... It- Sonny doesn't know where, where with Carly, Carly is, uh, it doesn't, she, she won't second guess him because she just, her, her blanket statement is it's Jason. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's Jason. You can just trust him. You can believe him and you can count on him. It's Jason mm-hmm. in the story. Mm-hmm. You know, like she's, and like she said to Sonny, he's, he's, he's taken bullets for you. He saved you. He went to jail for your son. And that's what he came back to your son. He's an informant for the feds. Like you could see like uh, kudos to Maurice Bernard for that moment. When, when Jason says, Hey, I've been an informant for the FBI over the last two years. And you can see just the crack in Sonny's just entire view of who Jason is in that moment where he's like, you, like I never expected you to do that even to protect somebody I expected you to, to find yourself in some gulag in you know under some hill in Scotland with your mouth shut before working with the FBI to keep somebody safe right and I think that was the major thing that was that was that was the final nail in the you betrayed me coffin in Sonny's yeah. mind and I'm with it so good <laughs> so good <laughs> It is good. James uh, is is convinced that Sonny's meds are already being messed with, so that's leading to uh, this enhanced reaction. What you what you said earlier might be true, Matt. Maybe maybe, maybe. they're already being messed with by Ava. Maybe Ava and Valentine have the same idea, or they've been working together. I don't think that. No, I, I don't lean toward working together because if that was the case, I don't see why Valentine would have to reach out to the pharmacist. But if his meds are being messed with, like I said just moments ago. It's because they had the same thought. If I could just knock Sonny off his rocker a little bit more, it can be very ad- advantageous to me. Mm. Oh. oh, man, oh, man, that's good stuff. I, I'm on the edge of my seat watching General Hospital lately. It's really good. It's uh, really good. Yes. I, mean, I tell you, this is a, I mean, I'm disappointed in Ava. I like Ava, though, but I'm disappointed in her and the, th- the thing she's pulling right now. But this is what the number one thing is. She trying to get him back on the juice too, you know, pouring him scotch and stuff. She's, she's trying she's to knock him off, huh? She's trying to knock him off. She's trying to get him off his rocker. Mm-hmm. Or at least you remind know? him who he used to be. The powerful like Sonny. That. The one that wasn't so strong. so manipulated by your emotions and your sensitivities, but one that is able to make the hard choices and do what needs to be done. Maybe. He is gonna be throwing highball glasses against the fireplace in no time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, remember two years ago at the convention where he's like, "90 Sunny is back." Yes. I think we. I think 90 Sunny might be back now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was for real. That wasn't for real when he said that. I, I, I thought, oh, he's gonna come up with something really sinister, and he really didn't. He just had more Sunny to play. Yeah, That's... yeah. Like 90 Sunny's back was basically him just giving that that angry look to the Novak in the trunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guess you won't mess with me again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe going back to her old ways and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, so, you know, over the last couple of years, we, we really softened a lot of the villains on General mm-hmm. Hospital. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it came down to it, the, the, the dripping with villainy was reserved for a character that came through and did a whole bunch of terrible things that the audience could never forgive. Uh, hey, hey, you know. It was Esme. Yeah, pretty much Esme. And then before that, you know, it was Nell. So, there, you know, there's just been kind of one centralized supervillain uh, mm-hmm. while the others, other antagonists that had been a part of the show were all softened due to love and relationships and all that sort of stuff. Isn't it interesting that they're going to vilify these folks that had been, you know, had, had been good for a little while. They're going to mm-hmm. vilify these people 
And then they go, cure Heather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going to stop at Heather, but make uh, Valentine and Ava a little more in line with how they were originally written. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you what. For Valentine, his dad would be so proud of him, and his auntie Helena would be, whoo yay! <laughs> um, but, you know, it's not just these people. This is who, who who's gotten the main focus, you know, over the last couple of days. But, you know, I mean, Dante, at the end of the week, he's woken up. And the mm -hmm. first thing he wanted to do was tell Anna that Jason didn't shoot him. Mm -hmm. Perfect, yeah. Good timing. Perfect timing. Because now he doesn't have to go to trial or something, right? I don't know. He's gonna hang out in Kelly's. He's gonna or he's gonna he's gonna live above Bobby's again, right? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that he's gonna be upstairs. And you know, it's gonna be ridiculous too. He's gonna be up and down those stairs like no one like like and no one's gonna see him. How long has it been since somebody lived in that apartment too? To me, that just shows the um uh, I don't know, because it's going to be difficult, like I say every week, for, for me to compliment what's happening now without disparaging what was happening before. Um, because it, it seems as though the the focus um, is family and history when it comes to really selling these stories where it hadn't existed before. And history in the fact that we have somebody living above Bobby's. When was the last time somebody had lived up there? Oh, it was a, it's been a while. A long you know, time. And there was a period of time, there was a period of time where they didn't even show the stairs anymore. Yeah. Now yeah. the stairs are in clear view again. Again, because they're necessary. <laughs> you know, so, so just th those little nods to things that uh, hadn't been touched on on the show in, in a number of years. Um, I, get, I get the mentality from, from the writers from before. Why focus on the past when we can push the, the, the future? You know, when we could tell our stories and not be burdened by apartments above Bobby's. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but there is an element of just enjoyable comfort that comes to yeah. references of these things that had existed for a long time. And I, I love, I love that they chose to go to Bobby's and sit together and have a little what? toast to her. Yes, I loved it. Yes. Hey, Chandra's here. Hey, Chandra. Oh, Chandra, we thought for sure you would. You know, I didn't, I didn't do a huge, didn't do a great job of, of advertising the early start time because I forgot. So until yeah. you texted me earlier, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah, we're going on half an hour early. <laughs> uh, but hi, hey, Chandra, happy Easter, happy resurrection day, whatever it is that you say, hello and welcome. Uh, James also loves the touches of history. Um, I am enjoying the elevated sense of family. Again, I defended it before. I understand isolating these family units so they don't really blend through. And you know, um, Sam is is more of a more of a more of a Lexus's kid than a Cassidyne type of deal. Like mm -hmm. I, I I get that when it comes to ease of being able to tell these stories and really sell the relationships. But that doesn't mean I don't freaking love Danny and Alexis having a "You're my favorite grandma" conversation. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean I don't love have an Aiden opening the door to see Jason standing on the other side. Like all of these little tiny family moments. Yes. I know that Jason isn't Aiden's dad, but Jason is Aiden's brother's dad. <laughs> Jason mm -hmm. is Jake's dad. Jake is Aiden's brother. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was trying to put Lucky in there somehow. Yeah, well, I mean, don't. Because <laughs> Lucky hasn't been in there in a long time. No, so. Lucky is Aiden's dad. Yeah, Lucky is Aiden's dad. But Jason is Jake's dad, and Jake is Aiden's brother. So, you know, there yes. is this connection. Jake, or mm -hmm. excuse me, Aiden might have a thought, an opinion, a perspective on what's going on that would never have been uh, even given the five seconds of I've opened the door mm -hmm. from before. Mm -hmm. You know, even if it's just like, oh, hey, Jason's here. Um, Come on in. And then he runs upstairs. You know, at least we got mm -hmm. a little bit of his like, oh, mm -hmm. reaction. So I don't know. It's good to see. It's just good to see, Ma. It is. I love last week. I love Brooklyn's reaction when, when Jason walked into the police station. Yes. She was like. <laughs> it, was, it was lovely. I loved it. And then she delivered that letter from Monica. Yes. Oh, Monica, and then they gave a good excuse. You know, she 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 got she got injured, but was undaunted. But because she was injured and still undaunted, she got sick. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just it just. Well, it, 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 I it, think it's... they're just going to explain away the reason why we don't have Leslie on the screen, and you know, and 
until someday when she really physically cannot. Well, ever. she seems you know, like she physically cannot currently. Uh, you know, um, I, I don't know. Maybe, will they, will they write her a farewell episode? You know, um, because <laughs> they they um, I don't know what it's like to be elderly and have played somebody for a long time. Would you do you want to play the death of that character? I would think not. But also at the same time, as an artist who has like been, you know, Monica Quartermain this whole time, you know, it's been her career is being Monica Quartermain. Monica Quartermain is her whole second <clears throat> life, essentially. <laughs> so wouldn't it be interested as an artist to be able to explore the end of that person's life as you approach the end of yours? I, I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not, I haven't played a character for 35 years. I don't know. But it might be, it might be interesting. Not something I want to do. <laughs> I get that. I totally get that. Uh, she got a bug at the hospital. Says, "Like, she got a little sick." Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what are they, what are they going to do someday when when Leslie's really not here? Um, I, I don't know what are they going to do someday when Graham, uh, Rachel Ames, is not really here. Mm -hmm. They made when... reference to her now for years. That, well, that, that that's Leslie. when Graham's is is going to pass on the show. Uh, it's funny because Blink mentions her right now. Audrey's still alive. Um, yeah, but also Audrey hasn't been on the show in 20 years. No, you I, know, I, I can't. Leslie even Charleston has been on the show this year, you know, within the last six months. Yes. They you had know, that so one it's a little different. Sitting down and yeah. You know, um, Stuart Damon had a wonderful retirement, sending Alan Q off before he left. Um, John Engel played the death of Edward Quartermain before he passed in real life. Didn't he? They wheeled his sick butt out. After he gave the cure, uh, yes, yes, I think didn't he didn't he forfeit himself for to save somebody? Yeah, yeah, he 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 didn't take the cure something? of the encephalitis or whatever it was. He he passed the cure on to um, a child, a, young, a child, a young um, Emma. I think it was Emma. So so he let Emma have it, and then ultimately the Edward character passed away off screen because of it. But John Ingle was there, you know, him in the wheelchair, very unable to do much right. but played the role and that that's that's the kind of thing i'm talking about you know mm -hmm. so i don't know i don't know how interesting it would be leslie's longest running cast member says james since 1977 yes so yes oh she and alan were something else in the 80s they were like the war of the roses they were doing all kinds of things to each other <laughs> oh man when you when it comes to like classic soap turmoil alan and monica are it mm-hmm Always cheating on each other, too. Always, always. And then somehow, always. some way, finding that love for what each other once again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Mama, Nicholas Alexander Chavez is no longer in the uh, in the credits of General Hospital. Well, I think he's, well, he's officially done there, isn't and that he? That means that he is no longer under contract with them. Right. Which is, according to reaction, a smidge early. A smidge early? A smidge early. So it seems as though he might have been let out a little earlier than the end. Now, to me, that means that they are intending on either being done with Spencer entirely or trying to recast. I would say that I would say the latter. I think they're going to try to recast him. Yeah, I think they're going to try to recast him. Um, I, I don't know what their future plans are. Um, I, I think that um, I think that yeah. there's a, that the Sprina fan base is more invested in Sprina than the show ever really truly was. Yeah. So I don't know if there's a future with with Sprina and Trina with Sprina and Trina with Trina and Spencer. Uh, I don't know. I just I don't know what the future is when it comes to that. They could they could put a wrench in it if they wanted to by having Spencer purposely stay gone. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that and that you know. Uh, the betrayal that that Trina would feel that you 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 know you're no better than your dad. You let me believe you're dead. Because mm -hmm. at the end of it, they 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 played up so much of the love that they had for one another. You know, like the deep, unending, just passionate young person love. Oh, the whole Paris stuff was beautiful. You know, it was beautiful, and it was just All dripping Paris with just uh, just the highest level. Of, of emotion and feeling that these two characters had for each other up at this point. He falls off the boat. You kind of have that momentum still behind him a little bit. 
And so if he were to come back, you would expect that he would not choose to be gone, that he would want to find Trina. Like these, you know, I, so I just, I, I don't know. I just, I don't know, Mother. I don't know what the future holds. I wonder how much longer they're going to leave him out there, though, have him come back. I don't know. But it's, it's, it's not going to be, it just doesn't seem like it's going to be Nick Chavez. And I'm with it. I understand. We've been saying it for, for you know, a while, since he left, really. Mm-hmm. What's the point of bringing him back on for two weeks in order to have to choose Continue. a new face anyway? Because there's no possibility he's resigning. No, I think it, all that would do would disappoint fans. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a small pocket out there that would love to see it. Mm-hmm. Let's see them reunite with uh, Nicholas's face. Where they switch well, it to th- somebody else. I, th- I think we need to get our warm and fuzzies from Paris. <laughs> from Harris? From Paris. Oh, from Paris. Yeah, I just, yeah. just rewatch the re- reruns. Just watch. That's it. our warm and fuzzies. And, and and it was really good. You know, it was it was really good. Mm. What the, how they depicted the two of them, yeah. the last few scenes in Paris. I mean, they had they had finally made it to their bliss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, there's been there's been chatter, and I, I retweeted uh, Nicholas Bechtel. On, mm-hmm. on our account, because uh, people are like, well, what about him, right? And then, of course, you know, the, the answer is he's too young and ugly or whatever, right? <laughs> like, he's not as handsome as Nicholas Chavez. He's too young, all that. And so he went out there, he tweeted, basically, I don't want to anyway, you terrible, toxic people. <laughs> like, that, that was, that's my translation of his words. He was far more gracious and calm and kind mm-hmm. and, 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 and played, uh, you know, the mature person as mm-hmm. he should have. You know, he said, I understand I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I'm 19. I'm going to college. Mm-hmm. I'm good, essentially. Yeah. But there, was, there was a layer of subtext under there of, I don't know if I even want to anyway with how Me horrible and you people are. are fine, what right? Me and Sydney Michaela are fine. <laughs> <laughs> we're good we're yeah. good we're good <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness gracious uh people were so rude says james it's true they were rude to him they were rude but hey you know it's whatever it's whatever it's twitter right go on there if you want to expose yourself to it or don't you yeah, know where well. it's at if you want to see it and you know where to avoid if you don't mm-hmm. oh goodness gracious so you know we'll, we'll see what the future holds for nicholas chavez for the Spencer character, um, it seems as though Trina's looking for, for full closure. She is. Which my assumption is would be her going, you know, we should probably fish that body out of the water and bury that properly. Well, he's got a headstone with no body. Right, and so I'm just kind of feeling that that might be the direction that they're heading in a little bit uh, with it. But, you know, maybe maybe they're going to find a body. I, maybe I he noticed, truly is dead, Mother. I also noticed that the headstone did uh, uh, yeah, that would make that would have made Spencer either twenty two or twenty three years old. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm with it. I'm with it. If they do bring Spencer back, I want to see Spencer come back with a little more direction. You think so? He he's flapping in the wind, doing absolutely nothing, ma. That guy has no skills. He's got no job. He's got no future. He's got no plans other than I love Trina. Like there needs to be more to Spencer Cassadine. There, there does, but but at this, but you know the Cassadines aren't known for that. The Cassadines are known for wrecking havoc. But they have skills and they have jobs. Well, not that they've really depicted all that much, other than you know Cassadine Industries other makes money, Cassidine so much Industries. money, and we have so many people working for us, we don't have to do shit ever. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. Who calling James names? What's going on? I'm not going to scroll up. Nobody. I don't know what you guys talk about, but whatever. I want to see, see Spencer come back with Esme, says Melissa. Eh, I don't know. I think we just need to move on from all of that. Just be done. We had our thing. We had our time. We got Ace. We'll just leave Ace in Laura's closet until he's 12. Like, really? We're good. <laughs> I don't think we need to, to reach back into the into the Esme thing. I, uh, as as talented as Avery Kristen Pohl was, I, I just I'm done with it. You know, I think we can all move on. If you know, if I had the choice with, between two long haired lovelies to return, it would be Nell. Hmm. I'd rather see Nell return than Esme. See Nell just send a bunch of ripples in Nina's life again. I, I'd rather see Nell. <gasps> what if Nina mentally breaks? See, we don't resurrect Nell, right? We don't we don't physically resurrect Nell, but we get her back. We get Chloe Lanier back to play a hallucination 
of Nell inside Nina's head. Well, I think that's perfect. Did we, we have it? We had that once already where, where she showed up and, and wasn't Nell like, you wouldn't mm-hmm. have fixed me anyway, Nina. Yeah, there at the graveyard. Yeah. At the cemetery where she was like, you know, trying to convince her to do nefarious things with her. We yeah. could be a great team. Yeah, I think we should we should revisit that. I think that need that that Nell should be a, you know, she needs to sign six months and and be a, a fic, you know, a depiction of Nina's imagination, a figment of it. Or or like Nina could fracture and her other personality is her awful. You daughter. and your soap DID. I don't know because you like... you want everybody to have more than one personality. Uh, some of my favorite viewing has been the folks thinking there's somebody else. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> totally. 100%. I love it. Oh, oh. <laughs> I like DID and I like a good smackdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. You really love a good smackdown. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, maybe we'll get more smackdowns. Maybe there's going to be more physically fighting, you know, because I feel like we're leaning more into soap, you know, classic soap storytelling. You I know, tell a you. Bit, so Elizabeth. I like where you're going. <laughs> uh, everybody hates my idea, Ma. Everyone hates your idea? See, this is, this is the problem with social media and you people. <laughs> okay? So I come up with a brilliant idea, and then everybody says how their idea is better. Okay? Melissa's like, no, it needs to be in Willow's head. Why? Why, Melissa? Well, and then Willow can have the split personality. <laughs> Come on, Melissa. You just you just taking every part of the idea we said, but removing my my part of the idea. Well, I think Kate would probably love that idea. Because <laughs> now that Willow, now that Willow's well, <clears throat> her character's kind of flat. <laughs> Carolyn is like Nell should haunt Carly. Look at that. Even Carolyn's like you're wrong. I don't like this, folks. You know what I expect from you people? Every time I open my mouth and give my thoughts and opinion, I expect this chat to be filled with, what a brilliant idea, Matt. You are a soap god. You are untouchable with how your mind works. That is what I expect, folks. Give that to me. Give that to me. And if you can't give that to me, donate to the Super Chat. (laughs) Uh, Taiwan, you missed all the Valentine chatter. We started off with that. Sure did. And isn't he sinister now? Oh my gosh. <laughs> ah. Oh goodness gracious. I want to know, does this mean does this mean that uh, JPS has got more time for General Hospital right now? Uh, yeah, it, it really it, it feels as though he's he's finished with his villains of Valley View season two or three. Yeah, he went away from that kind of villain to this kind of villain. <laughs> oh boy. But oh. you know what I'm a little concerned about with a new writing map? What are they going to do with Cyrus? Whatever they want. You know, oh gosh, I, everybody, you guys are so kind. Every, instead of donating kind. to the Super Chat Ma, now I'm just being littered with compliments. Ah. What a brilliant idea, Matt. Your mind is amazing, says Chandra. <laughs> what a brilliant idea, Matt. You're the best, says, uh, says Carolyn. Uh, you're brilliant, Matthew, shouts Kelly. Matt, that was a brilliant idea, says James. Thank you. Everybody. <laughs> I think they're blowing smoke up your skirt. I don't wear a skirt, mother. <laughs> I wear pants. Thank you. Shorts right now. <laughs> and Kelly donated. Oh, you guys. Oh, goodness. Thank you, Kelly. Don't let Kelly do it alone, folks. All right. Um, What were we talking about? Oh, we were talking about pants. Uh, I don't know. Nobody had any bad pants. <laughs> you know, pants were fine this week. Uh, what would you think? You, oh, we got your soap violence this week, Mom. We got Danny, Deck, and Jake. I know. I looked at Dan. They were wrestling around, weren't they? Yeah, they, they they did a good job. Yeah, they they had some standing folks for that. Did they? Mm-hmm. Really? Because I saw I saw the actor that plays Danny uh-huh. with his stuff. Oh. They both had a little flip in their head. Well, he definitely threw the punch. I feel like like Asher Asher Anderson, <clears throat> who plays Danny, was the one that threw the punch. So whatever rolling around must have been the some people, but um. But that, that's good. I'm I'm really liking this Asher kid. I think he's really taking to Danny very well. Yeah, I, I like it too. I like it too. And the reason why I like it so much, I think it's believable because, okay, so Danny's mom is Sam. Is Sam got a little more fire to her than Liz does? Yes. Right? Yeah. And she's done a, some of her, she's done some unexpected stuff 
in the past too, you know, and some dangerous stuff. Kind of different than Liz. Mm -hmm. Now Liz has done some stuff too, but Liz is more of a more of a um stir the pot and step away. <laughs> the chances of her getting, you know, into fisticuffs is yeah. a little less likely than Sam. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. yeah, I, so I good. what I was what I was surprised about was I would thought I would have thought that Danny would have got the best of Jake, not Jake got Danny. Well, I don't know. I guess I guess if you were to put those two kids next to each other, I would assume that Danny would probably win. Because Danny would be to me, Danny would just be more of an aggressor. He you know? more of an aggressor, and then when it comes to physicality too, like Jake is is taller, but he's lanky. You know, well, really looks not, like he'd be able they're, to push they're side by side. There really isn't that much difference in them. Nope. You know, I think Danny's got a little more, um, you know, a little more girth to him, a little yeah. more, you know, a little more muscle mass, maybe. Where, like you said, Jake is kind of lanky still. Mm -hmm. He's tall and, you know, he's like a puppy that's growing into his paws and feet. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> He'll get there. Give him a little more time to bake, everybody. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> but, um, Dan it's, Danny it's good, just though. seems a little more edgy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I just, I, I just, you know, I, I appreciate, I appreciate that it wasn't just them as well. You know, we had Aiden in the back too, not doing much other than, hey guys, don't do that. But, you know, it just goes to show, you know, just, just more life. I thought Aiden's part was a, a little, um, I, I don't know. He's still figuring out how to act, honestly. Um, yeah. You, you can see him still working it out. Now, Aiden, to me, if it was for real life, <clears throat> Aiden would have picked a side. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, here's the thing. We're, we're, we're finding out, you know, that Danny and Alexis have a great relationship. We're finding out uh, that Danny and, and, and Dante have a great relationship. We're finding out all of these things about Danny um, that were off screen before. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's just, uh, it's just a matter of these things now being presented to us and us having to catch up with what they want us to know about these characters going forward, even though we never saw it before. Um, and and it, and it, and I think it really leans toward um, <clears throat> it leans toward them showing us some um, relationship um, with their dad eventually. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. I hope that Jason winds up with the two of them in front of him someday. You I know, it might happen sooner than later. He's going to have Jake in front of him here in no time because uh, mm -hmm. he's you know he's currently standing on Elizabeth's stoop. Mm -hmm. He's frozen in time right now, folks, standing there waiting <laughs> to walk in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so it, it would make some, but, but, you know, like I was trying to lead into with all of this stuff that we haven't seen on screen, since we haven't seen this stuff on screen, it would be our natural assumption that Aiden and Jake would be closer because they live together. Sure. While, uh, while Danny and, and Dante's kid would be. Yes. Uh, closer because they live together. Right. Um, but we're not quite seeing that. I mean, Aiden seems to be a little more neutral uh, through all of the brothers mm -hmm. um, than we'd seen. So maybe he's just going to be the chill one. You know, maybe he is the middle kid being the youngest. Maybe. <laughs> I don't maybe. Know. I don't know. Maybe. It's also possible that they have a, be a great idea of where they're taking Danny and Jake, but not so clear of an idea of where they're taking Aiden, but just want to include him. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Aiden is the peacemaker, says James. Yeah. I guess we need one of those. He could be the chase. <laughs> He's trying to be. He's chase trying in to be. Brooklyn going for a cheaper wedding. Yes. Uh, we, we, we just don't have the 80s budget anymore for grand weddings. And so now everybody must be married at home. Or at, the, or at, that, at that little chapel. Or at the little chapel. At so the yeah, little no, chapel, you know. Sounds what like they're going to get married at home. And they're going to do it so, so Gregory doesn't have to go anywhere because he can't even ride the elevator anymore. He's struggling. Yeah, yeah. Struggling. Yeah. And I thought the last scene we saw of Gregory, um, it, it was it really showed us the audience that his disease is progressing. Big time, big time. Oh my goodness gracious! Another donation here, Chandra. Thank you so much. I missed one earlier because we were talking Melissa, Kelly, Melissa, and Chandra. Thank you so much for your contributions you to guys. Super Chat. Well, once I once I hit that first goal. Mm -hmm. Upgrade. Yes. Can't wait. <laughs> oh, can you, you know what? I forgot to put my mic close. My mic is super far away. You have sounded a little funny. 
I oh, heard you the whole time, but you have this baby over here. You have I sounded a little distant. Wait, wait, I just forgot. It's all right. Is that better? A little bit. Maybe even worse. Who knows? Who cares? Oh, let me see. Is it We're turned just up? Out. Yeah, it's turned. It's a. It's a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's you know it, it, the distance. You know, I talk right into mine, and so mine is is very like super clear and deep, bassy. Well, usually I remember to pull it up next to me, and I didn't. So. I could I could do the podcast from way back here, but it sounds way different. Does it sounds echoey? Yeah. So you know, a little canny, right? A little tin canny. Right. And so I prefer to be up here. So, anyway, whatever. That's just me. That's just technical stuff. <laughs> Plus, you know, I've seen all those pictures and videos of people doing radio shows, and this is how they have things set up. They are. Because... WKRP in Cincinnati. <laughs> KGO. <laughs> bum, 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 weather <laughs> on the 25s. The sun has creeped out once again from behind the dark cloud coverage here in Sherman Oaks, California. Mm -hmm. I can still see some white clouds in the sky, probably covering at least 50% of it. But they're white clouds and not dark clouds, which is different than what we've experienced over the last couple of days. Dun, 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 dun. Weather on the 25s. Well, I can't wait to see what happens with all these people. I love Jason's back, and I I'm, I'm, I want to see what's so oh, poor Sonny. What is going to happen to What's going to happen with him? What's going to happen with Christina and Molly, mother? Listen, all right, they finally had a conversation about something that wasn't the baby. Yeah, they did, huh? They did. They were talking about whether or not Molly was going to be able to keep a straight head while trying to make sure that Jason stays in the slammer. And she really had to establish herself. My lawyer life and my personal life are very different from each other. Yes. Christina. Yes. Yes. So that's good. You know, have I completely forgotten uh, the characteristics of how Christina was in the past? You know, that girl, she engages her mouth before her brain often. 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 <laughs> <laughs> ah ha ha often yeah um and you know is she she's somebody who like we talk about kate mancy and how she's brought an element of maturity and adulthood to the role of christina but what she still isn't is you know um not reactionary you know right uh, we, we've just seen it over the last couple of weeks she's she's presented with something that makes her think oh well maybe this is right and then she leans in that direction and then she finds out something else and then it pulls her back in the original or in a, in a different thing you know mm -hmm. it's not even necessarily she's going to believe the most recent thing that she's heard but her ability to mold her opinion based off of new information seems to be very apparent and i think i think the new writers are touching back on their personality traits oh yeah absolutely you know, with with things that Christina's done in the past, and also mentioning how doe-eyed and romanticized Molly used to view the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which I guess you she would have to open up her eyes being a lawyer. How she used to try to make Jason and Sam be together all the time and would decorate the house. And, you know, when she was mm -hmm. uh, like, like Avery. Like how, how can you possibly, you know, um, be the uh, prosecutor against Jason when your life has been, I want Jason to be happy. Or right. I want this love story in front of my eyes. Right. And so it's, I get it's, it. I get it. it's kind of cool that they check it. It's another reach, it. you know, into the history of this little, little hole that Anna makes every week. You know, they're reaching <laughs> into that hole and pulling nuggets of history out and informing uh, the, the characters today. So it's, it's, it's cool. It's mm -hmm. cool. They made a Shiloh reference. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They did make a Shiloh reference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because she, he, Jason was instrumental in saving Christina. Yep. And yep. if Sam was too, of course. Big time Sam and Jason together saved her. Yeah. Well, Melissa says that uh, Chrissy telling Nina all of that BS about Sonny being the happiest she's ever seen him. And that's because she hangs out with his other kids more than Christina. You're his least favorite child. <laughs> I would say that's, I don't know if he's his least favorite child, but uh, Sonny's favorite kid is definitely Dante. Apparently. I mean, it's kind of always his favorite kid. <laughs> Ever since he shot him. Yeah, and he was, when he, when he got, finally got the news from Ava, manipulated, that uh, Dante had, was awake, man, it was so easy for her to orchestrate him to stay home. Mm -hmm. Sonny would you know, run out the door if she wasn't there. If he would have saw that text and he was home alone, he'd have said, Frank, we got to go to the hospital. Gosh, thank you very much, Carol, for your major contribution to the Super Chat. The biggest one we've ever had so far. Thank you. 
gosh. My gosh. Uh, Blink is saying that Christine is acting out of character with Jason, and I have to disagree with that a little bit. I think it's unrealistic to expect that 100% of every single person in Port Charles with Jason back in town would go, oh, yeah, no, he didn't do this. No. To have every single person be pulled under the spell of Jason would never, I think is extremely unrealistic. Mm -hmm. And when it comes down to it, Christina, of all of Sonny's kids, respects his opinion more than the others. I, I don't so. see Christina stepping up and arguing with Sonny on a regular basis. Now, if she did under Lexi Ainsworth 10 years ago, that's different. Well, she did. She was mad at her dad for a year. But that was a decade ago, right? Well, there's, close to it, yes. There, there's no reason for those, those same feelings to still be actively playing in how mm -hmm. she's seeing her father today. So of, of what I have seen over the last couple of years with Sonny's interactions with his kids, Christina has been more consistently on his side than all of the other ones. I have to. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because you have to only think of the older kids, too, you know. Yeah, you, you, you know, Avery doesn't count. Yeah, we, it's got to be, it's gotta be <laughs> Michael, Christina, Dante. Even, even putting Jocelyn in there. You call it Michael, Jocelyn, Dante, Christina mm -hmm. would be his four adult children. Mm -hmm. Sort of, you know, Jocelyn. Girl, a very, ain't very Michael distant no more. Well, you know, but up until yesterday, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, of those four, Christina has been unwaveringly on Sonny's side, at least in the time that we've been doing the podcast. So let me at least limit it to that number of years. Well, I thought Carly's reaction to him was pretty good, you know, with her, what is wrong with you? <laughs> ah. Uh, he's had it. This is what it is. He's just, he's just had it. Ooh. Uh, if the kid who's joined the cult is always backing your decisions, rethink your decisions. Ooh, nasty, Melissa. <laughs> she didn't mean to join the cult. She was manipulated. Goodness. Goodness, Michael was Sonny's favorite. I think Michael just spent the most time with Sonny because Michael always lived at the house. <laughs> Till he got married. I agree with you, though. He was his favorite one. On a time, he was. Uh, he's, the, he's the one that's been around the longest. And then, uh, of course, and, and then he had a pretty good relationship with Morgan, too, though. Sonny did. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't see any of that. Uh, so I don't care. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. What's a good so time? I guess that's why that, you know, all that rumbling we heard about Morgan coming back is just not true. Uh, Carolyn wants to know what the money goes to. Uh, if you contribute to a super chat and it goes to me. Thanks. <laughs> No, uh, so so this money, uh, it goes into a YouTube account, which I can't withdraw until I hit a certain level uh, that mm -hmm. the uh, the account goes to. Uh, once I hit that level, I can pull it out and it goes into my personal bank account. But what, ha what I'm going to do with that, though, is I'm going to upgrade this microphone. So when I bump it, it doesn't go out and I don't have to fiddle with it for five minutes before we go on the podcast in order and, for it to work. Yeah, and on yeah. down the road. You need a monitor too. I need a second monitor. Uh, probably upgrade. You know, this this the chassis on my laptop is starting to crack a little bit here. So you know, like it it, it goes to, to to equipment, uh, server space, and and just the general continuation of these shows. As fun as it is to bring to you guys, it ain't free. None of these shows that you watch about soaps are free for the people who are putting them on. So, um. Thank you for any contribution you can make. Um, I am not demanding it, nor even truly asking for it. It's just available if you wish to contribute. <sighs> yeah. Uh, Morgan was always jealous that Sonny loved Michael more. See, even Morgan didn't like Sonny. Again, more evidence that Christina is the kid. Yeah, well, <laughs> she currently is anyway. Yeah. Uh, the money goes to tech and event tickets. Now, that would be the most ideal situation. Now, I don't expect, you know, the the four, five, six regular contributors on the chat to send us 
thousand dollars between the five of them that would be ridiculous but eventually you know we get a number of people wanting to chip in their 199 or 99 cents uh when they when they come and hang out with us on sunday we would be able to turn that into grace led tickets and airfare and, and sweetening the pot for somebody to come on the show or something yeah i don't know i don't know what the future holds don't come to me for the news or plans yeah, we're you know what you guys are. <laughs> we we are embarking on our on our um, going into our fifth season. Yeah, and in our uh, continuous four years. Next Sunday is going to be a next Sunday is our anniversary. Yeah, hope everybody can join us next Sunday for it. Oh, so exciting! And honestly, I didn't think that we would do this for four continuous years. Mm-hmm. We have a we have like I don't know, maybe about. 225 or so episodes out there when yep. you say that uh we have um i can tell you exactly how many posts how many how many how many episodes we have give me a second to pull it up i was just guessing you know mm-hmm. i mean we've been doing it you know it's going to be the beginning of our fifth season so it'll be the mm-hmm. start of our fifth year yes so we started our, our first show was april the 8th of 2020 yeah Log it into the uh, into the server here, Ma, so I can tell you exactly how many episode numbers we put up. Now, this is going to include Tenth Floor. This is going to include Days for Dummies and also Late Night Tonight. Mm-hmm. But there isn't very many episodes of Late Night Tonight, maybe. Four. No, because I am bad at coming up with ideas and concepts for it. So am I, uh, obviously. You, you know, I never yeah. have anything for you, do you I? You know, like sitting here, you know, and then we're like, well, we could podcast and then like we need something to at least put on the cover art about what it is we at least intend to talk about, even if we only spend two minutes talking about it. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, Do- Dolly continuing to like uh, videos. So thank you very much, Dolly, for that. One day you're going to hear me say your name. Yeah, she's continuing to watch from the beginning. From the beginning, week after week. So cool. Uh, uh nope, that's not what I want. I'm getting there, Ma. I'm telling you. You getting I'm there? Tell you. I'm gonna tell you exactly. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna figure that out. Exactly. Oh, goodness. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just wasting airtime now. It's okay. You're you're not you're not you're not filling the air. I'm this sorry. Is not fault. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Uh, uh. I don't know. We have a lot. We got a number. Thank you, Daisy, for your contribution. Oh my goodness. That's their fifth super chat. Thank you very much, Daisy, for your regular contributions. Thank you, Daisy. Oh. Hey, George. George is here. 32 are watching. Everybody like that. Hit this middle. Smash that like button right now. <laughs> okay. Fifth season needs to add a little kid to the show, says Blink. All right. Well, we got a couple of little kids that would love to be a part of the show, but they would dominate it, so we can't. Yeah. You, you remember a couple of weeks ago when, when there were when there was a whole gymnastics competition happening behind <laughs> Ma? So yeah, you sure. we'll consider that yeah. kids. They'll be here season. later on, but we'll be off there by then. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh Kaiwan watches us a little bit in uh, in his pocket. So that's good. Oh. I, I I imagine they just listen to the uh audio while, while jogging or something. Well that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's my guess. Good. I yeah. used to, when I was commuting, boy, I used to listen to all kinds of podcasts in the car because I commuted so many hours a week. Man, me and my car turned into one. Man, I, I commuted so much. 15, 16 hours a week in that car. So I listened to a truckload of podcasts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot, not even just so podcasts, but like true crime, all kinds of different stuff filling yeah. your time. Because uh, eventually, you listen, eventually music is boring. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I disagree. <laughs> I disagree. I've always, I've always said, you know, I said, always said to your dad, and I say this to you too, Matt, if anything ever happens to me, like I'm like, you know, unresponsive, I'm in a coma or something. Play music. You never let the music turn off in my room. <laughs> you play my playlist and you never let it turn off and I will wake up. <laughs> I'll wake up. Back. I know I will. <laughs> Just like don't they. I just need some music. <laughs> uh, Chandra has a late night tonight idea. The career of Jeff Cober. All things Jeff Cober. <laughs> That's not a bad one. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. Drives grandma nuts, says Jean. I don't know about what, though. People just talking in the, in the, in the chat. Uh, Nina has three jobs now. And it's... 
I don't well, think she's she going to work, work for, for the Invader no more. Yeah, she's, she, she, what's her second job? Oh, uh, she owns the Metro Court. Crimson and Crimson, Crimson and, and the Metro Court. The Metro Court. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm all for Nina losing it all. I love me some Cynthia Watros, but I can't stand Nina. And yeah, I'm no. ready for her to lose it all. I want, obviously, she's lost her best friend and just doesn't know it yet because that Ava ain't worth having. Yeah. Currently. So uh, she gonna she gonna lose her she she's lost her best friend, and I'm I'm beginning to think you know with all of this crud that Ava's done recently she never was her best friend. Yeah, maybe for a minute. <laughs> I think Ava was just kind of like you know felt, you know she didn't have a whole lot to choose from at the time. I guess we're gonna have to find out you know like we found out all kinds of stuff the Valentine's been secretly up to. Maybe Ooh, maybe another uh, maybe a, a revelatory scene for Ava is going to be uh, coming soon. Um, let's see. <laughs> uh, Michelle says there's 201 videos on our YouTube channel, so that means that in total we probably have close to 500 episodes. 500. That's would, not possible. Why wouldn't it be possible? It's just 52 weeks of the year. Why? Well. well <laughs> Yeah, and we did we did the the podcast for like two years before doing the doing the YouTube, right? Yeah, I guess so, huh? I guess. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go on to this. I need to figure it out. My watch podcasts. Right? I'm gonna go to Apple Podcasts. It's gonna tell me. That's mm. what I'm gonna do. Oh, Matt! You know what I yeah. listened to this morning? What'd you listen to? I listened to the Easter Hair. I listened to us die on there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, 232 it, according to uh 10th floor podcasts. Uh, that uh that sounds about right. Number. So, I'm going to continue to say 500. It just okay. makes it sound better. Sure it does. If you count the interviews, GH event and the extra extra specials, sure. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Chandra. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Uh, Chandra agrees that they were never best friends, and Al Ava's always had Nina's number. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that. I don't know that Ava, beyond Trina, or her children, are capable of having a honest, real, uh, you know, relationship that's uh, not. She didn't have some sinister plan behind it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Trina, shoot, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe even the relationship that Ava has with Trina is solely based on the fact that Trina came into her life just after Kiki died. Could be. You know, like if Ava starts treating, you know, like. I would be, I would be really interested in knowing how Maura West feels about it. Does Maura West love playing Ava? good or is she more loving to play e Ava bad which one does she like more or does she just thrilled as all get out to play Ava mm. Mm. see okay so uh, we're still getting some late night tonight suggestions in but you know what mom they're all soap centric I think our audience has a taste and a flavor for only one thing well that's not surprising <laughs> <laughs> you know it's generous it's not like you know what just talk more gh but it's like you know like uh an, an actor of the week and the other projects that they're doing but you know a, a soap actor you know yeah i don't know whatever anyway we have to yeah we're gonna do thursday we'll figure Saturday. it out maybe we'll just log on and just go hey ma how's it going and then just see what comes up we could do that. Probably good. What you been doing? Oh, it's been a lazy day, Emma. It's been super lazy. Because it's not like we can't talk to each other. <laughs> it's not like we wouldn't find something to speak about. That's true. There's never been a... I don't think there's ever been a point in time where Mom and I have been in the same room where we're just like, I don't know, whatever. Not too many times, huh? No, I mean, it probably would come at like the end of some sort of long, nerdy conversation. Besides, here's the thing. My mother's always been very approachable. Okay, and she's always been one to kind of listen to the innate dribbling of their children. Okay, my because whole I'm life. actually because I'm interested in all your dribble. <laughs> my whole life, which <laughs> means that I am very used to 
even in my ripe old gray age, having a thought, having an idea, having a, a, a concept, a, a something that I feel like I need to share or I feel like my mother would appreciate. And it comes out very quickly. I, I could be sitting there hanging out for Christmas, sitting on the couch, and then, you know, it comes to my mind that, you know, Patrick Stewart's coming back to be guest star as, as Captain Picard in the new Star Trek show. And you know who I'm going to tell my mother? And you know who I'm going to tell about that? My mama. <laughs> and she'll go, wow, how interesting. She won't care. Not in any <laughs> sort of real deep way. But she'll be happy. I'm excited. And she'll listen to me talk about it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Remember at the even at the top of this podcast, I explained Wandavision to my mom. She listened to the whole thing. By yeah. the way, the chat thinks that you would enjoy that show. I don't know. It's one of the things where you kind of have to know who the people are before getting into it. It's not. I tell you, I tell you, th this is just true for me, and I don't know if y'all, all you you guys can relate to a certain degree. This thing right here. Yeah. Look yeah. at that handsome dude right there. He's yeah. so nice. Look at him. He's really coming oh, through, too. Him. He's being broadcast like crazy. That is a clear picture. I'm crazy about him. Anyway, um, this device right here is has stolen my ability to pay attention. <laughs> You'll be sitting there. <laughs> the television will be on as soon as you slightly get bored. Exactly. And I, I, I've gotten to, like... I can't pay attention to any longer than what the freaking TikTok is. I mean, I just, my mind just starts. Mm -hmm. And that's new. I've not always been that way. Here's the thing, Ma. Here, here's, here's the real truth thing. of the situation. The real God's honest truth. And I'm not trying to be mean. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> I'm not trying to stir the pot. I'm not trying to say something controversial. I'm just going to tell you what it is that I think. What's that? Television and movies. In 2024, compared to even the early 2000s, is boring, trash, terrible. On it, I, I agree with you On to mass. a certain degree. When it comes I, down to it, um, the I, I, there was once upon a time, up until 10 years ago maybe, there was a show every night of the week. That was on regular broadcast TV that I was invested and interested in. Mm -hmm. There was a Monday show and a Tuesday show, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday show. Maybe two on Thursday because Thursday's stacked, usually, when it comes to new stuff. Mm -hmm. It's gone. It I don't have, well, it's Monday, it's time to watch 30 Rock. It's Tuesday, it's time to watch Parks and Rec. It's Wednesday, it's time to watch RuPaul's Drag Race. It's Thursday, it's time to watch mm -hmm. House. It's Friday, you know, well, Thursday, right. you know, House, and it's wrestling, and it's this, and it's that. You know, that is that is gone. That is gone. It's gone. It's not a hundred percent gone, but a lot of it's gone. A lot of it is gone, and it and it's not and it's not due to well, I only stream now, and it's not due to because I I yeah, I only stream, but I stream Paramount and I stream NBC. You know, I still have access to the thing, but the offerings just are not as interesting, especially on network television. Yeah, you know, um, like like that new that new show that uh, that has the, the 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 dude from This Is Us, and was at the at the concert. Becker. I believe it's called Tracker. Yeah, Tracker, like that thing. People apparently it's very good, and people people are enjoying it and all that kind of stuff. I don't have any sort of interest, and if I were to turn it on, I know that it would just be like this repeat show every week of this guy finding a dude. I haven't watched an episode of it either. <laughs> I haven't either, and I like Justin Hartley. Yeah. I haven't watched an episode of it either. Your grandma has, and she says it is good. But but even then, like the 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 good in today. Wouldn't be, you know, the good from before. Uh, even like, like Quantum Leap, Ma. They, 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 you know, you know, Quantum Leap, you know, Quantum Leap. I sure do. You know, Scott Bakula, you know, jump through time. All that kind and of then stuff. they did it again. They right? did it again. They rebooted it. You know, they have a new thing and, and all that kind of stuff. But it's, 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 it's so dry and basic. There's, there's nothing there anymore. Like, there's no, there's nothing to fill things out. There's just a skeleton of the idea of a show with no meat on the bones. And I think that's what we get a lot. There's exceptions. You know, This Is Us was very good. Yeah, that Karate Kid show apparently is very good. <clears throat> that Sean Kanan is on. 
you know, we have our shows that? that we like. We like we like GH. I like um, I pulled up a, 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 a three body problem on Netflix and I, I watched, you know, that season and then a little little short uh, a sci fi fun uh, little thing about aliens coming and the threat that's going to arrive on the planet 400 years from now and how we deal as a society understanding that in 400 years, these aliens are going to be here to kick our ass. Uh, how do we deal with that right now is the concept of the show. And I found it to be interesting. So there's some exceptions out there, but by and large, like Chandra says, it's not as good as it used to be, right? Must see TV no longer exists. According to Chandra. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that old song, <clears throat> do you remember that old song? Well, you don't Matt, but some of us do about, um, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, TV killed radio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, the internet killed TV. <laughs> uh, it killed, it killed the, the, the artistic quality behind the things that we were watching. Um, you could see, at least I can see reflecting now. I, I wouldn't be able to have said this, you know, as entertainment has evolved in front of us, but I can say it now in retrospect that mm -hmm. the, um, artistry is gone and the obvious push for money is very clear mm -hmm. in, in just how things are done. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, internet didn't help with that. Streaming didn't help with that. Being able to um, consume very quickly large amounts of entertainment didn't really help with that. Especially with people turboing through this stuff. They're not paying attention to those artistic details any longer. Anyway, my God. <laughs> how, how far off? See, this is late night tonight, everybody. Yeah. We went down a rabbit hole, didn't we? A big one. A big one. A big one. Anyway, uh, it's Easter. It's almost noon. We need to lean into the wrap up. We do, because I'm expecting guests in an hour and 10 minutes. Right, and I'm sure there's still stuff that needs to happen. Oh, I was yesterday, I was busy yesterday trying to pre as much as I could, mm -hmm. trying to get things done as much. I was making potato salad all day yesterday afternoon. I made, I was up last night, 10 o'clock, making Rice crispy treats. Oh, wow, you didn't just buy them. Look at you, just committing. committing. Melissa Weirach's old TV genie is convinced that reality TV has ruined uh, the rest of television. Reality TV was the beginning of it. That's for sure. Um, that's think, Survivor. That so was the beginning. Reality TV uh, hurt in daytime. That's for sure. Uh, and uh, that, that was that's been well documented over the years. Um, we we as a as a as a entertainment consuming society has moved on in major ways from being so obsessed with reality TV. It is has stepped away from it a little bit. You, it's you not still have your Kardashians. Yeah, but you know, it used to be the great race and this and that and all these you know, they, they, Those like, shows are still on. It. They're just not the pulse of, 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 you know, pop culture anymore. Survivor's still on, but it's yes. not this massive, every single person on the planet is watching it and talking about it at work anymore. It's still on. Right. It's still available if you want to watch it, but mm -hmm. it's not the powerhouse juggernaut that it once was. Same thing with Amazing Race and all of these other, you know, the Kardashians are still there, but we don't have Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie finding another show to be on ABC. You know, um, when it comes down to it, if you if if you're following a celebrity, a Real Housewives of, or the kids of Sylvester Stallone, you know those reality shows, you're gonna find them on E. You're gonna find them on a specific network, and it's no longer just proliferated I'm across not all. A huge fan of that kind of programming. I tell you, the one I cannot stand, and it's on ABC. Loves that crap. Oh, The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. I don't care if you're 20 years old, 25 years old. I don't care if you're 65 years old. I don't care. Holy smokes. I am not going to compete with 29 other chicks for some dude to look at me. Oh, hell oh, to the... You, you, you hate that hate show. It. You've always hated The Bachelor. Hate it. Always, always, always. Anyway, go to the elevator, folks. Let's get out of here. You know, oh, we're not in the, we're not in the hospital. We were hanging out at Bobby's today. That's right. Uh, we've turned the sign. It says close we now. the sign. Sorry, we missed you. And with a little, little little hand to clock that says, you know, when we're going to open again, which is going to be next week live. Oh, I loved this week too, Carly. Carly made it, it kind of made Mr. Kate's like, oh yeah, you ain't getting no BLT here. Get the move. Get, get to step. step in. Get to step in. COVID no killed the 30 something reboot. Good. We don't need a 30 something reboot. Who cares about 30 something. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> well, are we getting in the elevator? Yeah, we're getting out of here. We're getting out of here. I was just thinking of how much I wanted an Everwood reunion, but we can't do that because Treat Williams passed away. 
He did. And I just finished watching him on the Swans. Oh, yeah? I watched him on the Swans. Uh, Yeah, the Truman Capote. Oh. Uh, He played Babe's husband on that. I believe it's his last role. Oh, okay. And he was on a series. It was on some sort of Hallmark Channel show. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, and then, you know, just just yesterday, um, uh, Chance Pedromo, I think his last name is, he, he passed away. He's an actor who passed away in a motorcycle accident as well. Mm, I've never heard of that. Person. Chase or Chance Pedromo. He's, uh, he's, he's, he was a rising star. He was only 27. He's in the 27 club now. Um, Aww. Where uh, he was, he's, he's been on a number of shows that were on Netflix, essentially. Uh, he was on the, the Sabrina, the Teenage Witch reimagining the reboot one the reboot one which was more darker and you know not a comedy mm-hmm. well it was fun it was common there was a comedy to it but it wasn't mm-hmm. it wasn't a sitcom like a little different yeah it wasn't a sitcom like uh like the caroline ray one um mm-hmm. melissa joan hart is probably the better reference uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh so he was on that um and then he was recently on the first season of this show called gen v which is a spinoff of another show called The Boys, which is a very violent superhero show. Mm. Uh, and so I passed away in a motorcycle accident. Just, it's just a bummer. But hey, you know, life is fragile yes. out there, everybody. Um, and so I'm using that as a lead into go spend some time with your families, especially yes. on this Easter Sunday. I've been That's mad. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. So I've been mad. I've been cat. We'll catch you next time right here on the 10th floor. Like and subscribe. Goodbye.